So my objective today is to briefly outline the way in which the Ag Inputs activity has attempted to promote change and improve performance in this broader system using a market facil facilitation approach. As Jean mentioned, the problem that we have in Uganda is that the agricultural input sector is plagued by both low productivity and a huge problem of counterfeits. To combat this, the uh, ag inputs activity adopted a market facilitation approach to drive change, the premise being, as we've mentioned, uh, that rather than providing direct service delivery, um, the Ag Inputs Activity and its partners should look at ways to provide the right incentives to get market actors to exhibit the right kinds of behavior. So our objective here is to increase the availability of high quality agricultural inputs, to decrease the prevalence of counterfeits, and we use both a, a market systems facilitation and CLA approach. This was our original theory of change. Basically that role model businesses could outcompete the others by providing better customer service and increasing the access to improved inputs, therefore, thereby increasing adoption. But by the end of year two in the activity, at the point in time when I came in as chief of party, uh, the interventions had not yet achieved the kind of level of change in the system that was expected. So one of my first tasks was to commission and carry out a mid-project strategic assessment to consider why we weren't getting the they weren't getting the leverage from the role model. And this was all built on the assumption that market pressures would create incentives and uh, would reward players for providing better service and better quality and would work against the counterfeits. The result of the strategic assessment was basically to say that there was so much bad competition from the counterfeits that there weren't enough incentives for players to actually offer better service and better quality. And as a result, the um, critical mass of businesses were not making any changes in their behavior. And what was determined then was that actually what we needed to do was to change the rules of the game basically to create more incentives for good quality and more disincentives for uh, counterfeits and bad competition, which was based only on price, not on quality and service. So in the end, what we started doing is focusing more on changing the rules of the game with the understanding that when you change the rules of the game, the bad businesses will be forced to exit the market reducing counterfeits and improving the competitive environment, therefore leading to greater incentives for investment. And then we go back to the original part of the, of the theory of change, that b businesses would then provide better service, better quality, increasing the access to genuine inputs, and thereby improving adoption. In this process, we then reorganized our activities around seven uh, task forces to address various aspects of changing the rules of the game. And what I'm going to do is use my limited time to uh, talk a little bit about what we therefore did to look at the seed sector and increasing private sector's role in, in quality assessment uh, and quality certification for seed as part of changing the rules of the game. So what's the problem? It's similar to, um, to the example uh, earlier mentioned where you had a private set, you had a government monopoly on seed production, which was privatized under the assumption that the private sector would be more efficient, more effective, and provide greater quality. What happened was that the seed sector was privatized in Uganda in the 1990s, and we got to the point where we have 26 seed companies each of those 26 seed companies has hundreds of outgrowers. Each outgrower's field is supposed to be inspected three to five times in a season, and the government ministry, with the responsibility to do seed certification, had four inspectors. There was no way that they could possibly make the rounds. And the, and the government laboratory had one full-time employee to do all the seed testing. 
much less being able to do the sampling, etc. So with the uh, emergence of COMESA harmonized seed guidelines, the, we're looking at a situation where Uganda's seed cannot be exported commercially because it doesn't meet the harmonized standards. And Uganda is likely to be inundated with better quality international seed coming from outside the region that's not necessarily well adapted to the Ugandan situation, forcing out the private sector. How do we come up with a solution? Well, we actually were approached by local private sector players. Um, Chemifar is the only private laboratory in Uganda, and it is ISTA accredited, International Seed Trade Association. They proposed to go into joint venture with the UGASERT, which is the local or organic inspectorate. And so they approached us when, in halfway through the project when we got our seed sector add-on. To address this issue, we took a team from Uganda down to Zambia and South Africa to look at the role of the private sector in those markets, including government, private sector, and donors. We did a, a initial feasibility study, which was done by Heartland Global, a, a multinational technical assistance firm with years of global experience in seed, and they decided to become part of the joint venture. And at this present time now, um, they created a joint venture called Ag Verify, which is offering a voluntary quality mark that allows the private sector companies that are committed to quality seed to distinguish themselves from the vast majority of the uh, bad, fake, and poor quality seed in Uganda. And they're negotiating with the government on the possibility of being able to be recognized to do the seed certification in Uganda. So this is the, is the label for Ag Verify. The first quality seed went on the market in March this year. And the approach to bringing this into fruition is really a multifaceted one. So it includes a number of interventions. The first being capacity building. So they created a 10 week uh, seed certification course to cover, to bring the public sector inspectors, the private seed company inspectors, and the Ag Verify inspectors as a third party inspection agency, all on the same page to understand what Comesa seed quality actually required. The second is an online application to allow real-time GPS located data entry for inspection data into a massive database, which is going to provide increased transparency in the system and for the first time allow government to know what seed is in production, how much seed is going to be available, and to undermine the current problem we have, which is the government tries to buy more seed than was ever produced. And therefore, by definition, they're fueling the counterfeits because the seed companies buy grain to meet their government contracts. It's combined with e-verification, which is this scratch-off label, which allows the individual consumer to verify that the product they have is genuine. And it is a multi-donor intervention we are not a grants making agency, but we work together with Enabling Environment, another Feed the Future intervention, uh, to co-fund the capacity building with Ag Results, which is a multi-donor supply pool project on legumes um, to provide finance for some of the initial activities. And they have an application pending with a local multi-donor trust. And the last component is public education. Massive need to educate the public on how to use the system, how to interpret the system, and on the benefits and advantages of quality seed. So in conclusion, the sustainable response to complexity has to arise from opportunities within the system, work with a coalition of key stakeholders, draw on international best practice, build a customized win-win solution with strong local ownership, and be flexible enough to respond to emerging issues as the situation evolves. Now, this intervention's only been going for two years. Uh, first seed is only on the market in March, so it's still very early days. There are many challenges and opportunities ahead, but the commitment to 
Learning and adapting is going to be critical to the long-term success and sustainability of this private sector solution.